Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode, episode number six of the 5-1 Speedway Show. Hopefully you've managed to catch up and uh, watch all the other five episodes or listen to them on the podcast on Spotify. Tonight I'm very, very privileged to have this guy. He's a legend in most parts of the country, mainly with Peterborough, Scunthorpe and Wolverhampton. He's uh, a bit good on the grass as well, won a few titles on the grass and uh, done lots of things at 21 level. It's my great pleasure to welcome to the 5-1 show, David Howe. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, mate. Pretty good. You know, it's uh, episode number six and it's going strong this show so far. But uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, my first question, like I've asked enough everyone on, the po- on this uh, show, is uh, how's 2020 been for you? I mean, have you been starved the Speedway? Oh. <sighs> It, uh, it's been different to what I planned, um, and I think what everybody planned. Mm. Um, as far as Spiro is concerned, with um, Polish League, Swedish League, I think I've actually watched more racing and you know, the Grand Prix and whatnot. I think I've watched more racing this year than I have done for years. Um, but obviously, I, I, I plan to be helping uh, Ryan Douglas again this year. Well, again, I was going to be helping Ryan Douglas, um, but that obviously uh, went a bit, bit wrong in March. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I was lucky enough. Me and my wife at the last minute decided we were, we, we knew things were getting pretty bad, and we 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 thought there's not going to be many meetings on, so we we did go and luckily grab the Ben Fund at Scunny, yeah, uh, which happened yeah to be one of the only meetings that people would go to. So uh, it's just been, it's been what it is, hasn't it? You know, you just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I've been say, seen, seen more Speedway on TV, but not as, obviously nowhere near as involved. No, and of course, that's a completely different side of it this year for yourself. Obviously, like you said, you've been, you're going to help out Ryan Douglas. Uh, you have helped out, was it last year or year before, Nikolai Bus Jakobsen at Berwick? You helped him out a little bit, I remember rightly seeing. Um, so, yeah, it's a completely different being a spectator this year rather than actually either riding or getting your hands dirty with a few spanners sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I did the, the last, the Peter Craven meeting, Joe Efford rang me up and a, and a mechanic there. So I did feel, oh, I felt totally lost. Joe said I did okay, but I did awful. But yeah, I was looking forward to helping Ryan because I worked full time for Nikolai. Oh, okay. And yeah. I've got nothing but, I've got nothing but, um, yeah, high high praise and respect for for Nikolai. But it was diff- difficult, you know. I've, I've got a a wife and a young family, and I was Nikolai's only mechanic. So wow. every meeting Nikolai did, I was there, whether it be England or Denmark or wherever. You know, and at one stage, I think I did some like twenty five days in a row in Denmark, and you know, and it was just it was hard. It was really yeah. hard. <clears throat> Uh, but where this year with with Ryan, it was just going to be uh, Leicester and Wolverhampton, um, and again, got nothing nothing but high regard for Nikolai. He's a lovely lad, but Nikolai and Ryan are totally different <laughs> opposite ends of the scale. In uh, I think in their laid backness, if that's a, a word. <laughs> so I was quite looking forward to helping Ryan, uh, but it, yeah, it, it obviously didn't come off. No. So is the, is the plan for yourself then to help out Ryan again next season then if we get going? Yeah, I hope so. Um, it, it, it just, with, um, with, with the COVID thing and jobs being insecure, I kind of t- took on a few uh, jobs that, soak up my Mondays is a difficult day for me with him okay. and obviously Wolverhampton is a Monday or, uh, but whether I can get around that I don't know but uh, I, I hope so um, you know, I, I wanna, I'd like to think I can help Ryan out a little bit and help him progress so you know uh, he, he wants me to help him I've got his bikes and everything here <laughs> still so um, if everything works out well you know I, I'll be helping him out well, fingers crossed that that can happen. For, but obviously, for one, Ryan coming over and riding, and also then you can get your hands dirty again and uh, enjoy a bit of actual proper live speedway sort of thing. But 
yeah, I'm sure though mechanicing is the next best thing than riding really since you since you stopped so recently as well. Hundred um, percent. It's uh, it, it it's in some ways it's, it's better. In some ways it's better because mm. you get the same you, you as an X rider you ride through the rider. So you still get the same feelings and the, when they win and when they're, when they're going, when things go wrong, you have the same ups and downs. Yeah. You just don't have to pay for things and you don't get the pain. <laughs> <laughs> so in some ways it's better. Um, yeah. Uh, um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I really enjoy it, you know, and I, and I loved it with Nikolai and uh, yeah, I've done quite a bit with Jai and, and other, other riders and I do like it. Mm. Um, so yes, it's it, it's the, it definitely is no, nothing. Nothing will replace yeah. racing a bike. The feeling, nothing can replace that. Um, but it's 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 pretty close. Yeah, for me I mean, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I know that thing because uh, when when I stopped race, race, riding recently as well, it's uh, I managed to get in the, uh, a few spannering jobs with James Shane's uh, last year, and then obviously I, I helped out Josh Bailey a bit at national league level. But yeah, it's the, it's the closest thing. I, I understand what you're saying because uh, when, especially when I did the whole season with Josh at Mildenhall, um, it was like watching myself through Josh. You know, I could see where he was going wrong, what he was doing right, what he was doing wrong. So yeah, I completely understand that. You know, I can I can echo those feelings straight away. But uh, anyway, going on to your own riding career, you know, I know you got you had a, a long lustrous career. Oh, <laughs> as I've made my notes, you know, uh, you know, starting off, um, really, how did you sort of get the bug to go sideways then, really? Uh, it was, my, my dad rode grass track mm -hmm. um, for, I think he rode for 31 years, so it was a long time, he only really packed up for me. Yeah. Um, and I always thought, oh, I'm going to be a grass track rider, you know, just, just as kids, you know, my dad was racing. I was there on my BMX and riding around. And, and then uh, I went to Long Eaton, took me to Long Eaton one day. And I, and I just fell in love with Speedway and that was it. You know, from then, it wasn't just a, um, a, 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 a kid talking about what he wants to do. This is all I talk. I, I want to be a spear rider. I want to be a spear rider. And, you know, dad waited about four or five years before he let me ride. I was, um, and then, you know, um, and, you know, I got my first bike when I was nine and, uh, you know, I was, I was lucky to, to, to ride a bike for, for many years after that. It was, you know, um, great fun. Yeah. And I, was that starting at uh, grassroots grass track then, then progressing to junior speedway and then to <coughs> obviously conference league later on? No, no. No, no, no. There was, I mean, there was no junior speedway when I was a kid, really. But there was more junior tracks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, my the first bike I had was a a, a speed a junior speedway bike, uh, and the first time I rode it was um, actually after a grass track. We picked it up at Bristol Grass Track. Okay. And. Um, my dad was riding that meeting. The first time I, 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 I dad said I didn't get off the bike all day. And uh, I remember my first ride and it was on a, after the meeting at Bristol and um, dad, dad was so scared. I was just going to panic. He, he jumped on <laughs> his bike and like got on the outside and followed around. But, but then in that winter, I, I went to my first ride on, on the next proper ride. It was at Milton Keynes. Oh, okay. The Elfield Park. Mm. <clears throat> and, uh, and then, Luckily for me, that winter, Mildenhall still had the junior track yep. run, um, what would be Bend 4, there used to be a junior track over the back there. And uh, we went down there every, every weekend all that winter, but I was the only rider on it. Mm. So I had the whole track to myself, and it was a proper little, it was a mini stadium in a stadium, in its own pits and everything it was brilliant. And for a nine-year-old, it was, it was, I was, I was, <laughs> in my head, I was... I was a yeah. proper spur rider. It, it was uh, the whole track to myself all winter. And uh, I, I just then obviously I used to go to Swindon there, the junior track, Kings Lynn, mm. and then Sheffield training track, uh, all, all these places. So, and, you know, uh, in the season, I've tried to get rides after the meeting at the Long Eaton and uh, all these places. But I didn't 
I, I didn't do hardly any junior grass track. I didn't really like it. I didn't like because I, I did a half a, a season or something on a on a on a, a one two five Honda, the same as my Speedway engine. Yeah, and I, I was getting like thirds and fourths and stuff like that, but I couldn't win. Mm -hmm. The guys who were winning, uh, like Chris Neath, um, people mm -hmm. like that, they're all on two strokes uh, with motocross yeah. tires on, and 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 I wanted to win, so I said, "Dad, right, I've got to get these." But Dad was teaching me to race bikes a certain way. Yeah. But to win, I needed to race bikes a different way. Didn't really help in adult grass track, but I, you know. When, and I'd say by the time he'd done that, within half a season, I packed up grass track. I, I just wasn't enjoying it. Mm. Um, I didn't enjoy the two strokes. I enjoyed, the time. and so yeah, you know, I just concentrated on speedway then. And you know, um, for years I didn't really race grass track again. So, um, but no, I, I loved that time as a kid. It was, it was, it was, it was brilliant. It was absolutely yeah. Like I said, that that first winter at Mildenhall, it I had the whole track to myself. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Just ride all day you know, as, as a nine year, nine, ten year old until I ran until we ran out of petrol, you know. Mm -hmm. it just it was like that. It's great. Yeah, good times to speak. I mean, every rider I, I know enjoyed juniors, I think much more than their senior career sometimes because it was just so laid back and it was so so enjoyable. And I mean, for you to say that you had the whole track of Milton all to yourself, you know, what better way to learn how to ride really, you know, other than obviously having three other yeah. blokes three other blokes either side of you, you know, other than that. But yeah, I mean, that's great to hear that though, Dave. It's mean, I mean, I've been been at Milton. I never saw the junior track when I, when I was a kid there. But um, but yeah, I mean, I've heard great stories from that track as well. But uh, moving, a, moving a bit further along, yeah. you managed, managed yeah. to keep... Oh. Um, sorry, no, carry on. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, you, man you managed to get yourself um, a team sport um, riding for Peterborough, the uh, Thundercats. Wasn't it your your first sort of uh, sort of club? Um, that yeah. was that was the year I think you had like yourself, uh, Ollie Allen, Simon Stead. Maybe was that the time you guys won the league that year? Yeah, ninety seven. Yeah, ninety seven. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've heard a previous another podcast with Peter Oakes, um, who was involved with that team then, saying that uh, I think he think that's the youngest team to ever win the conference league. Um, I think age-wise, I don't know exactly because I haven't got that sort of stats. But <laughs> I'm I'm going by Peter because he knows everything. So I imagine, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. So I um, imagine so. Uh, I was 15. Simon was 15. Ollie was 15. I think Ross Brady joined halfway through the year. He was 16. Mm. Paul Clues was seven. It was it was just a group of teenagers. Ah. Uh, no, that, that, mind you, that's what that league is uh, designed for, is bringing on kids of that age to try and further their own careers in, in the future. But uh, So what do you, do you remember much about that sort of uh, first season in 97? Yeah, yeah, I do, actually. It's one of those years where Speedway was still pure. Mm. We weren't racing for money. <laughs> we were, um, you know, we were, we were just racing our bikes and we... we all of us just wanted to win for the for the rest of us. Yeah, you know, I I, I wanted to be the best in the team. You know, I was number one. I was kept, you know, but equally so, Simon did and Ollie did. Mm. But at that time, there was no real rivalries between us. We were we knew we we knew we were building something special pretty much from the get go. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, I don't know how, I can't remember how many meetings we did. I know we, what, it, how many ever meetings that it was 20 plus, we, 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 we lost one, drew one, won the rest. You know, it was just phenomenal. Um, and it was, it was just a great, I mean, great year. I mean, going to, to, we lost at Exeter. That was the one we lost. You know, a bit of a daunting track for a 15 year old then. <laughs> 15 year olds that was quite daunting but you know we you know traveling all these tracks you know we, from the length you know, at the time there was there was that the leads were different you know the, it was hard to get in in in, in you know it's still in its infancy back then mm. and for a group of kids just traveling the length and breadth of the country winning as well 
uh, it was such an education and, and it was it was just brilliant times and I think I speak for for Ollie and Simon that Peter was amazing you know he was having a tough year that year um, because he, he tried to open Skegness and that went yeah. wrong he moved to the Isle of Wight and it cost a lot of money Peterborough was struggling in what was then the elite of in, yeah, I think it was the first year of the Elite League. Yeah, it was, yeah. And he was just fantastic with those kids, you know. And I think I think I speak for Peter, but he said it before, it was one of his shining lights of that year was was the group of boys that were just didn't matter whether it was raining, whether it was bad <laughs> hot, we just wanted to and I, and I wish I hadn't lost that, you know. You just yeah. oh, right, there's a there's a track there, it's got two straights, two corners. Let's go, you know. It was brilliant. Yeah, and I mean that, that that's just a kid's attitude anyway, isn't it? If you go racing, you wanna go fast, you wanna beat everybody. I can imagine because of the rivalry well, not you say didn't say rivalry, but you know, everyone was trying to beat each other a little bit. I mean I can imagine you went from maybe being a I don't know, maybe like a reserve, then to num like to a second like to a heat leader, then to number one, then you probably got changed again the following month because someone like Steady was going even better than you, sort of thing. Uh, I wish I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Oopsie. Started, I started the season at number one and ended on a near 11 point average. So, uh, uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Maybe not then. <laughs> just just, just going just gonna to pat myself on the back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see your head getting a bit bigger now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, but even even then though, I mean, you, like you say yourself, steady, uh, Ollie Allen. You all grew up through the same system, and you pretty much had uh, same similar sort similar sort of time careers, really timeline wise. You you pretty much all continued and stopped at near enough the same sort of time, really. So, you know, you three in particular, I mean, I can't remember, I don't know who was in the rest of that team that, that season, but you three seem to be the standout ones that really went and took the, the GB um, flag and flew it for most of the most of your career. Yeah, we, we, we tried our best. I mean, we, we all had different ways of approaching racing. Um, I'd say on the, on the international, not, not as in Poland and stuff, Ollie was the most successful out of the three of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah we, um, he was a pure out and out gator and uh, and and ruthless, and that worked for him in Poland. And, and mm. fair play to him, you know, he held a Polish league team down for many years. I, I never really enjoyed Poland. All right, um, and I flirted in and out of it. Um, but yeah, we all, I, I think, pretty much within a year of each other, we'd we'd, we'd all packed up, or you know, and uh, it was, you know, there was some, there was never a rival with me and Ollie. Oh, right. Um, but there was always sometimes severe rather with me and Simon. <laughs> and I'm lucky to, um, and I'm pleased to say now that as we've got older, there's a, a, we're, we're friends and there's a mutual respect, but at times it, got, it, it did get quite, quite uh, nasty. Well, yeah, I can imagine, especially when you guys had sort of done your bit in the Elite League. And then you came down to the Premier League when he went to Sheffield and you were at Scunthorpe and, and then and then obviously later Berwick with yourself. Um, you know, I can imagine steady being the racer he is, didn't want you to get one over him, but then you want to get one over him sort of thing, you know, that sort of... It, it, it was it was more than the under-21s with me and Simon. Oh, right, I see, yeah. Um, I think once we got out of that and we kind of, our careers went in, in different directions. He mm -hmm. was, Simon was more settled in the Premier League and had a successful doubling up um, period. Yeah. I kind of went to the Elite League early and got trapped mm. and couldn't ride in the Premier League and couldn't double up. So we kind of just, our careers went in, that, that, in, in opposite directions. Um, but the under 21s, it was like you got a, 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 a stopwatch over your shoulder <laughs> and in the end of the year it, it was ticking down. And, yeah. you know, history says that Simon was more successful in the British under-21 than I was, uh, you know, um, for, for, for whatever reasons. And we, me and Simon have, have discussed it quite a few times. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, but once we got past that, the under-21, I hated the under-21s because it created so many, you'd still got the bitchy junior grass track feel to it, you know, oh, where okay. the pet trying to get, you know, Adult Speedway was just Adult Speedway. Mm. 
and uh, you know, once we got past under twenty one, I think all th- all three of us have, you know, either been teammates in England or Poland and Sweden or whatever. You know, and we just you know you just get on with it. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what you can do is just get on with it. But um, looking a bit further on in your own career, um, you stayed with Peterborough in 99. Um, but in 98, did you ride to the Conference League or did you go up? Because uh, I've got on my notes that you rode for Kings Lynn in 98. Was that? I did. A... One, meet, one meeting. Oh, one Boston. meeting. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, racing for Peterborough in the Panthers team. And I, uh, think, okay. I think Simon was racing for Buxton or something like that. And... I decided one day that he was getting more track time than me, so I needed to. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> oh, oh, right, okay. So it's not quite I Kingsley. Yeah. Like so I ended up doing one meeting or something. Yeah. Like that. Oh, so, so, you, so you rode uh, 98 when they were in, in the Premier League then, Peter, yeah. than before you going up to the Elite League in 99? Yeah. Then. 97, 98, 99, we won the league, Peter, for both all three years. Mm. So it was like, for me as a kid, you know, I won the league when I was 15, won the league when I was 16, won the league when I was 17. It's just like, ah, it's easy. What are you really talking about? So, yeah, yeah. And then, then you came back down to earth in 2000, 2001. Yeah. <laughs> thing. yeah. But then I went to Wolves and won another one. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll come on to all Rampton in a minute. We'll come on to that one yeah. in a minute. <laughs> but no, yeah. but I say, um, 99, I say you done the treble, wasn't it, with uh, Peter Rowe that year, Crayon Shield and Knockout Cup, riding with Ryan Sullivan, Sam, uh, Sam Teaser, uh, Jason Crump. I mean, as a 16, 17-year-old kid, I bet you was, your jaw hit the floor when they said, oh, these guys are riding with you this year. Yeah. I, yeah, but I'd been at Peterborough since I was 12. Ah, okay. So, so all these guys were just, just like, I think when I was, I think I was like 13 or something, Peter Oaks picked me up and I went to watch a meeting at Bradford. And Sam T's eye just like, hey, hey, kiddo, you help me tonight. And I ended up being <laughs> panic. You know, I'm 30. I don't know what I'm doing. But, you know, um, mm-hmm. so these guys were just people I'd grown up with. Um, you know, Ryan, especially, I knew, knew really well. Jason, I didn't know as well because he, mm-hmm. he didn't spend as much time at Peterborough. But they were just guys I'd known since I was a kid. So, um it was just a nat- when Peterborough went up in ni- in the end, winter of nineteen ninety nine. Just natural progression for me to go. I wish I hadn't. Looking back, it was too yeah. early. Um, but then again, I wouldn't have been part of that. Yeah, that 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 team. So I'm I'm, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't have do- wouldn't do it again. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, like you say, probably a step too early, maybe in your own looking back with hindsight. But then the doubling up rule wasn't really around sort of there so you maybe you weren't able to sort of go Premier League and Royal Elite League at the time and so you just had to concentrate on just an Elite League then yeah and the Elite League that year was probably it was close to what the Elite League is now yeah probably a little bit tougher but I went in reserve and I think I got I think I ended up with a five plus average or something Mm. like that and whatnot and but then 2000 I ended up on probably on the same average, but the league got harder. Yeah. And in 2001, it got like that. But because where my average was, I was trapped. Mm. I couldn't, do, even when the double, and when the doubling up came in, say, I, don't, I can't remember what year, my average was too high. Uh, and I, I was trapped anyway. So I still say, if I had to write a script and do it again, I would have stayed in the Premier League for perhaps another two years. Mm-hmm. Learned, cause not, just, not just my riding ability, my equipment level. I didn't really know what I was doing and all, all these things. So I would have learned. You know, you, you, yeah. you go, like Simon, um, I'm just picking Simon. This has nothing to do with Simon. He had a couple of years there with, with say, Sean Wilson at Sheffield. Yeah. And you can't help but learn from them. Mm. You know, when you kind of with Jason Crump. Yes, you learn from them, but it's difficult because he's Jason Crump, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's difficult. Um, so I wish I'd done probably another, done a couple of years in the Premier League, but, um, you know, uh, you can't change it. I, I, and uh, I, I did what I did. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, having that, it's almost like you missed that sort of person in the middle, really. You had, you went from sort of, I don't know, someone at Premier League, maybe like Glenn Cunningham, I think, was riding with you in 98 at Peterborough or something like that, you know, who could have paved the way for you that 
like 99 sort of 2000 sort of seasons then yeah. you went but then with Gander Crumpy you're going from that sort of level to then all of a sudden having someone who's challenging almost for a world championship so he's again in different sort of different area it, so I, I mean just if you Building a foundation, I, I was just missing a, 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 some blocks out mm. of that, and it was fine when everything was going good. Yeah, but when things started to collapse, the whole thing collapses. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And, and you know, it, it, it and, and at Peterborough, and I, I spent a co- 2000 was a good year at Peterborough, 2001, I kind of just wasted. Okay, yeah, just didn't have the tools the mental capacity, the equipment to, to fix what was going wrong. Mm-hmm. And it was only moving away from Peterborough that did that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like I said, probably if you'd have spent a year or two, uh, like um, at Peterborough in 98, mm-hmm. Jan Anderson took me under his wing. Because he's not fighting for world championships and whatnot, a bit like how I was at Berwick and, you know, as I got older, you got more time. Yeah. And he doesn't care about the 17-year-old at the other end of the pits. He wants the team to win. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's going out every time to be the best rider he can be and fight for world championships and stuff. Yeah. And, and I, probably, I, I probably missed out a bit there. Yeah. And, I mean, you stay with Peter until 2001. And, obviously, 2001 is when you had Mark Laram in your team. You know, so I mean, current world champion at that time. You know, it must have been. I know you said you had a struggling year in two thousand and one, and probably one you wanted to forget. But surely having Mark in the team a little bit again, ex grass tracker, you know, and things like that. You know, surely that would have helped you a little bit during that season. Yeah, the problem with two thousand and one wasn't. That, I mean, having Mark in the team was brilliant. You know, um, but they changed the track for the. Um, the under twenty one more final. Oh, that, okay. They the 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 old Peterborough track was imagine where the white line is now. Yeah. The white line two meters further out. The oh, track okay. Yeah. Bigger but narrower and squarer. Mm. And they changed this track to have the world under twenty one final. So me and Simon could race in in that. And my first lap round it, I went out on the press day and I came into the pits that I hate it. Oh no, yeah. And for that day on, I've never liked Peterborough since. Um, and that was the end of me at Peterborough. Yeah. You know, I loved the old track and I didn't like the new one. Mm. And they did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the advantage, the advantage had definitely gone then straight away. Yeah. But, and uh, uh, now I limped through that season. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously, yeah, history says where I went after that. Yeah, and obviously then the move to Wolverhampton in 2002, you know, a tight technical track. Were they your sort of, did you like going to tight technical tracks or would you just prefer to have a big bowl like sort of Peterborough then? Never really bothered me. As long as it wasn't Eastbourne, I didn't care. Um, Nothing wrong with Eastbourne. My oh, hands oh. <laughs> I, think I, I think in all my career, I think I've had two good meetings there. I just, you know, but then again, when you're racing against Martin, Dino, Dave Norris and... Yeah. and five year race what do you do yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but um you know wolves i came very close to joining wolves when i was 16 um oh, right. but it was only out of um sense of duty to peter oaks that i, I went to peterborough mm-hmm. and uh it was just i think it was halfway through the 2001 year it was a england denmark test match at wolves and I was in the, obviously in the GB, GB team. I was standing watching a race and I was standing next to Van, Chris Van Stratton. And I just went, oh, Chris, I wouldn't mind rising here every Monday. And he went, well, oh, come speak to me at the end of the year and we'll make it happen. And that was it. And uh, at the end of the year, I, I rang him up and said, do you still want me? Yeah, come. And I was off to Wolverhampton. And uh, I'm still an asset now. And uh, it, was, it was a fantastic club to race for. Yeah, and of course, in that first season, it was the first year of the playoffs, and uh, he took on Eastbourne in the final. Yeah, we weren't so much about that. <laughs> but uh, no, I, that, that, that must have been good then to have a change of scenery, different people around you, and to lift the Elite League at the end of the year must have just cop- topped it all off then, really, hadn't it? Yeah, and total different environment. You know, one, the track, obviously, 
at Wolves is, 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 was totally different to Peterborough. The management. Peterborough had been through a lot of management changes. Yeah. Um, and it was... It was it was difficult to you'd go to a, a we all the riders used to say well we know it's Sky meeting because all twenty five promoters <laughs> are there. Um, but um, where where Wolverhampton Chris Van Stratton is the boss Pete yeah. Adam is the riders that's how it works there's a hierarchy um, you know I never felt I could go and have a, a laugh and a joke with Chris he was the boss mm. and if you got called into his office you'd better hope you'd had a good <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to off. Um, but then like the, the riders I, I know I knew PK quite well I had a year with him at Peterborough and he had the same engine tuner and things like that but suddenly I was mixing with Michael Carlson as he was then yeah. and you know Jesper B and just a whole different environment and mm. and I was I was at number two that year and I was partnered with Michael and Oh, he was fantastic to ride with. Not because he was a great team rider, because he was. He was pretty bad, actually. Pretty much <laughs> like me, the way I team rode. He, 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 look over your shoulder, but keep the throttle full yes. gas. Um, but you watch him ride. He's like, that's how I need to ride. Mm. Now, it was so... It, that year, Wolverhampton, I mean, he was phenomenal that year. Yeah. And uh, then you got PK, was more of the, the technical, and uh, you could go to Pete and ask, ask anything at any time and you know he, so it was a it, best move for me and it was mm. brilliant, brilliant i loved it yeah and i mean say the results show it you know um going through the the playoff system because obviously eastbourne finished top of the league that year and they were seeded straight to the final and then you guys had to beat whoever it was in the court oh, right and of course they were one-legged affairs they weren't the two legs yeah. that they are now. So, but uh, I'm sure that must have been a nice bit of bittersweet when you've managed to beat Peterborough and get through to the final. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I, and, and I dropped to reserve as well. Ah, okay. Even and I, I had a six and a half point average at reserve. Yeah, best reserve and, in the league at the time then. <laughs> oh, I just had a field day in the, prem- in the playoffs. I, think, I don't think I scored less and, until the Eastbourne match. I don't think I scored <laughs> Fifteen, yeah. You know, I had seven rides, and I was so it was it was brilliant for me. Uh, and uh, I'll never forget, and I'm sure any Eastbourne fan won't know that 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 it wasn't a runoff. It was Heat fifteen, wasn't it? Yeah. With my Mark Laram. Yeah, and, it would have been. Yeah. And standing in the pits at Eastbourne, and you saw them going down the back straight, and there wasn't a gap there, and Michael went round Mark, and the fences moving. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, ha, ha, one in one in a lifetime moment for a, for a Spiro to watch something like that. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, Mark going full gas around Eastbourne was a brilliant sight to watch for an Eastbourne fan myself. A bit biased, but you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, especially because I think if I remember rightly, you had one Sky meeting at Eastbourne where Wolves got annihilated one one meeting and then oh. all of a sudden and all of a sudden the Wolverhampton started getting the ball rolling. But then by the end of the season, you were the guys who had the momentum. You see, whereas Eastbourne, I think, were top of the league all year, near enough, and then sort of didn't go that up next gear up, whereas Wolverhampton got that extra gear and went up and obviously, like I say, won the league. You know, can't beat it, really. But um, so, yeah, you stayed at Wolverhampton until 2005 in your first sort of little stint you had there. Um, what other sort of memories do you have of that sort of first, those first few years at Wolverhampton? Just... I remember really enjoying it. I remember feeling my career was progressing. You know, I had a bad injury. In 2003, I made another massive step up. Um, unfortunately, I had a quite nasty injury midway through that year. Um, and the same in 2004 and five. I was just happy. You know, yeah. I was doing, I'd got continental teams and I felt like my career was on a, a, a decent, decent progress. 2005, again, I've got quite badly injured at, at Peterborough and that kind of put a you know slowed my my season down um and then I had to you know go to Oxford for a year but um you know I, I've got you know Wolverhampton was great for me I really enjoyed it and you know it was a good home track yeah and I mean during that time I'm just looking through what I've got on my notes here and 2003, when you were at Wolverhampton, you managed to get some Grand Prix experience 
you know, riding in two rounds of the World Championship, one at Cardiff, which I can imagine, oh, one of two, was it two appearances you made at Cardiff in your career? Was yeah. It? Yeah, yeah. Um, so 2003, and then in Slovenia, you were riding in, riding that meeting as well. So well, I, mean, I was, I'd, ri- I'd ridden in 2002, I got uh, in the Grand Prix Challenge. Oh, okay, yeah. And I think I was fourth reserve rider. Mm-hmm. And there was a certain amount of injuries, so I got called up to go to, to Kursko. And um, I enjoyed that one a lot more than my first time to Cardiff. Tell you that. Cardiff was just... Well, just yeah, I can imagine. Whereas, yeah. Chris, I imagine at Kursko, it felt like more like a speedway meeting yeah. rather than yeah. Cardiff and, being a big thing. And back then, it was the two rides, two third places. Oh, and yes. Wow, you know, it was, it was difficult. So, um, you yeah, know... I was I was quite happy to get a little bit further at Krushko. Yeah, because I'm uh, looking at this, what I've got here. You got you were out after the two rides at Cardiff, unfortunately, with only two points, and then you managed to stay a little bit longer at Krushko and score six points. So yeah. you know, I mean, as a, it's still it's still early part of your career at that time. You know, that must have been a huge experience for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the Cardiff one. All, all I can remember out Cardiff in 2003. Yeah. Then I was knackered after, and I thought, I've done two rides. But it was just so stressed. Not, stressful is not the right word. It was just so much. Mm. So much. And, uh, you know, uh, but then the next day I went to Newport and won the Welsh Open. And I just felt like I'd learned so much on mm. that weekend that I took it into, the, into my, my racing. You know, even though I didn't do very well in Cardiff, just being around those guys. And watching how they worked, and yeah, but I was, I was, I was knackered, you know, and I, I, I really did two rides, <laughs> good rides, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the two t- most tiring rides of your career, you know, <laughs> yeah. but mentally it just drained me. But it was again, it was just a learning curve, yeah. I mean, you can put it down, just put it down to that, and then obviously, again, it just helped you further and further along. But, um, going back to the domestic front, um, you say you had that one season at Oxford. Was it a case of that the numbers didn't work out at Wolverhampton and you had to move, or did you feel like you had to have a move? No, I was a naughty boy. I had a oh, bit of a, no. I had a bit of a, a bit of a fight with a Wolverhampton legend at Coventry, Uh-oh. and uh, and uh, I had to go a year in exile in Oxford as punishment. Oh dear! Oh dear! So, can you can you <laughs> sort of, can you sort of give us an idea of what happened without upsetting anyone? <laughs> <laughs> um, at the start of the year, myself and Sam, we, we, Chris Van Stratton said we had to make a straight choice between Sam and Emelenko and David. Mm. But we chose David, you know, because he's youth, basically. Yeah. And um, I just felt all year Sam was after me. Oh, you know, okay. From, he pressed out walls and he was after, you know, just... And whether he did... I felt that the Peterborough he didn't have to do what he did. And I, I fell off and I broke my ankle. And I said a few things in the press and Sam didn't like it and he wanted an apology and I wouldn't give one and it just got a bit out of shape and we ended up having a bit of a ruckus in at Coventry. Well, we were both watching a meeting actually. Oh, right. And, um, and I was still on crutches at the time. But um, yeah, and that kind of, you know, I can look back now. What a stupid thing to do, you know. Sam and Malenko were ramped and I'm going to get yeah. in trouble. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, I was 21 at the time, yeah. you know, or whatever, 22, 23, or whatever. And uh, so I had, a, uh, I had a year in exile at Oxford. And, um, you know, it was what it, what it was. It was, a, it was a tough year for the club. Yeah, there was yeah we were bottom of the league. Well, we didn't finish bottom of the league. I think Arena finished bottom of the league in the end, but it was a hard year, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I was all set. I, I I was all set. I was fed up with with the elite league. Then I was they were cutting the meetings. I think at the time I only got like thirty meetings in England, and I was all set to go to to, to Edinburgh in the, in the Premier League. Oh right, and got the contract and everything. You know, the deal was done. It was a bloody good contract. So, but um, <laughs> um, Chris wouldn't let me and he said no once you go you, you'll never come back and you, you're going to come back to Wolverhampton and what it turned out to be my, my best ever year you know mm. yeah so then like I say you had that bum year in exile 
at Oxford. So then obviously... Um, By the way, me and Sam are now completely fine with, you know, there's no... <laughs> we said sorry to each other. No, we haven't said sorry to each other. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but for the record, you're on good terms and everything's yeah. fine. That's all that yeah. matters, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I was right. <laughs> I'll just nod my head and smile. I won't say anything else. I'll, I'll be neutral. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you returned for two more seasons at Wolverhampton, which obviously sort of turned into sort of like your sort of uh, final years in the Elite League, really, um, yeah. before then in 09 going down sort of with uh, Scunthorpe. So what do you sort of, is there, is there, again, is there any other sort of memories from those last two years at Wolverhampton that you stick out in your mind? I obviously, 2007, I, I, I worked really hard. Once I decided I was going back to Wolves, I thought, right, I'm going to work really hard. And I worked really hard on my fitness. And it was, it was a good year, you know. I was second in the British final. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very strong at, at, at home at Wolves. And, I, and it, it, was a, it, was, it was my year where I'll look back when I'm old and crusty and go, yeah, I was pretty good back there. I had a good <laughs> uh, it, was, it was great. Um, 2008 started off the same, went a bit off with my engines and I struggled mid-season and, mm. you know, I just had the opportunity at the end of the year and I, and I was just, again, I was looking at it, I just couldn't get the meetings in the Elite League, you know, yeah. to, to, to be financially viable where I thought, well, I could race for half the money, do twice the meetings and score two-thirds the amount of points. Mm. And it was just purely a financial reason, you know, mm. I went to Scott up and, you know, not many people said to go to Scunthorpe for the money. <laughs> but, uh, it just, I could get more meetings. It was purely yeah. that. Were you just riding in England then at that time then? No, no was... I had a Swedish team. And uh, okay. you know, I had bits of Poland and stuff. But you, uh, Sweden had changed. You know, I think prior to 2005, you could take engines on the plane. I think you used to pay them like 15... 15 quid take the engines on sports equipment and oh, right. suddenly that stopped and suddenly you had to have like whole setups out there and, and it became very expensive mm. you know and it's not so bad for the riders who are based in Poland who just take the ferry over to Sweden but when you're in England it's, it's it, it, it was starting to become difficult to to make make money out of and uh, and, and if something went wrong if you blew an engine up oh how do I get the engine back yeah or how do, yeah they went back next. Uh, yeah, it just it was just too stressful, and so it, it it just made more sense for me at the time to to just to race purely in England. Yeah, and then obviously then oh nine was the start of you got right running the Premier League. Um, I can imagine that first year was like the David Howe season at Scunthorpe and at the Premier <laughs> League, winning nearly enough every race sort of thing. No, like my... no, well, it t- it turned out pretty good in the end, but I remember. I did a meeting at the end of OA. I did a meeting at Peterborough, and um, Magnus Carlson's mechanic came up to me and said, "Do you want fancy coming to Scunthorpe?" Because obviously Rob couldn't speak to me. I was still a wolf rider. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah okay," because you know, I was worried I was going to come in on a near eleven point average and this, that, and the other. So, uh, so uh, we we decided I was going to go to Scunthorpe, and I went up there on the say the Thursday or something. Did a behind the he seems practice and whatnot. And then I was going to ride there on the Friday in the Halloween trophy. Oh, right, yeah. On the 30, it was on the 31st of October. And I think I got one point from three rides. <laughs> oh, They're going to announce me next week as their new number one. I mean, as it turned out, I, 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 remember I, I did some. I remember when going to Carl Wilkinson and going, Carl, seriously, how do you, what do you do with this track? Tell me what to, and I did some of the bike and. I went and won my next two races, the semi-final, and won the final. I thought, oh, I'm going to make that. But I'm facing one point from three rides. No, this is our new number one, you know. Yeah. But uh, remember, when I went to the first meeting, I think I had last in the first race, and then two wins and a last. Oh, right. So I can six points, you know. It's like, well, this is, it's not easy, you know. Mm. And, um, but as the season went, I really got to grips with Scunthorpe, and I, to be honest, at the end of that year, I had an engine that just, I only used at Scunthorpe. Sean Wilson had developed this engine for me and I could just win races for fun. I used to miss the start on purpose. <laughs> uh, I, think I, did, I think I did 25 races unbeaten. And then not, I, I said 
I said I was going to get excluded, and I did. In the, <laughs> Rob, I'm going to get excluded now. I'm fed up with this. Yeah, there was this Slovenian guy from who was riding for red car, and he was beating all the riders up. And I said, right, I'm going to sort him out. And I did. I put him on his backside, and <laughs> I got it. and I did another twenty odd races without. It was just I just fell in love with the track. Yeah. And I had, uh, and uh, yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't just me. There was, like I said, me and Magnus that year. We swapped. I wasn't number one on there. You know, we were both nine plus riders, mm. and it was it was it was brilliant. You know, because again, Maggie was was one of them riders. If he if he scored fifteen, it didn't bother me if I got fourteen plus one. Yeah, there was a good mutual respect there, and we just we were just happy for each other. So it was it was a really good year. I really loved mm. it there. Well, that's good to hear. And obviously, Magnus Carlson, again, the Wolverhampton connection with you mm. guys as well. It obviously helps to have someone that you, you knew pretty well at the club and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I would say you had loads of seasons. Was it six, seven seasons you had there? Uh, 2015? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. After 2012, when I got injured, it was never, I was never me again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I had a couple of attempts and limped on. And, uh, um, but yeah, again, Scunthorpe is one of them tracks or places that I'm just holds a special place in my heart. You know, Rob and Gail, Rob's Rob. Yeah, he is what he is, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was lucky to have him on on my side than against yeah. me. Yeah, no, yeah, so. yeah. I can imagine if you rubbed them up the wrong way, you might get a, a, a reaction out of him, sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, right for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the setup at Scunthorpe, I mean, even looking at it now, even to get, like I said, the Ben Fund on this year and then some even youth meetings on, you know, it's a credit to Rob and his, and his team up there this year. But um, yeah, in that, in that time, you managed to finally do a doubling up for the first time in your career with Kings Lynn in 2012 and 2013. Um, sort of a, a surprise move, was it for yourself to go and ride the Elite League as well as the Premier League? Or was that something you wanted to do again? Uh, th- <clears throat> 2012 was it was all planned out I was going to have that was going to be my year yeah I was going to I was going to take the world on again and um, I started off that year in, in, in really good form not so much for Scunthorpe at Scunthorpe mm. for if things then I was having an absolute storm you know I did a couple of open meetings did really well um, and I had a couple of maximums for Scunthorpe away from home. It was just everything. I'd got a mechanic, which I'd never had, a, you know, a full-time mechanic. And uh, and then I did a, a stupid... No, yeah, sorry, no. I did a charity meeting on the right. grass track and did a stupid move. Okay. Uh, pretty much finished my career. You know, I was never the same. Uh, it, the track was awful. Mm. So absolutely. After practice, I came in to my dad and said, I don't want to ride this. This is dangerous. Uh, typical, my daddy went, well, don't ride then. And I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I said, I'll do one race. And I did one, my first race, I did one lap on the gas and then did three laps just tooling round. Mm. Coming to, oh, I can't ride this. Yeah, you know, I won the race. Oh, I can't ride this track. It's awful. And uh, I'll do one more ride. And then I'll... Yeah. Well, out. So I did the same thing there, but I made two good starts. No, two bad starts. I had to fight my way into the first corner. And I said, right, I'm going to do my last heat and then I'm going to pull out because at least the fans have had their, what I feel, the money's worth of coming yeah. to see. And I made a brilliant start. As it comes to the first corner, I thought, oh, no point battling. So I shut off. Uh, front end, got run over. Wow. And they shot me. Yeah, that was pretty much the David. The, I'm going to talk about myself in the third person here. I hate that. But the David that hit the deck never got off the track. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the injury was so, and I'm still struggling with it now. Um, it was it was stupid for me to even do do it. And yeah. Stupid for me to back off on a wet grass track going to mm. a first corner, you know. So it was a just my fault. Much my fault was the track. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, never, never recovered from that. So what was the actual injury that you did then in the end? Well, I, I, I dislocated my shoulder yeah. and broke, broke the shoulder, ball joint. Mm. But a dislocation can be like a, a millimetre. Oh, where right. 
my actual shoulder blade was here. Oh, whoa. And uh, it, it was, I mean, I can, I can only move my arm to there now. Oh, right. And, uh, you know, and they, they, they said I'll be out for a year. Well, I, me being me, I rode again in six weeks. Um, and I, I just didn't do the fit, you know, and I, and I used to have to get me, me left hand, lift my right hand on the throttle, grab hold of the throttle and, oh, right. <laughs> um, and I, I tried, carried on for another year and a half, but it was just, it was, I'd wake up the next day in agony and yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, I don't get pain with it now, but you mm. should see trying to put a coat on. <laughs> <laughs> very, very slowly, I can imagine. Yeah, sort of thing. Well, yeah. Things have to give me those heads down. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, uh, that's an awful way to sort of think of your own career. That there, there and then is when it basically sort of ends. Yeah, you know. I've got nerve. Like I can't feel anything here. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, but when I I knew it was bad when I crashed crashed because I got my arm. I remember getting my arm and holding it, and it was just like picking up wet spaghetti. Oh right. The whole thing was was just uh, and the, the doctors told my wife that I'd shattered my whole arm. But it was just but once it all set, it was to, but it was out like that for I think six or seven hours as well. It uh, was, of course, then everything stretched and moved by yeah, that sort of time. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, I've broken nearly every bone in my body, but <laughs> that one I've never had pain like. Yeah. I, somebody had said to me when I was on the track, "Look, you can end it now." I'd have taken it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I say I'm, I'd like to think as a rider who's had been injured, and you know, you've been a rider, you get your crash. And I've always taken it on the chin, you know, mm. that one, that one. Uh, yeah. Well, w when you feel like you can't move your arm properly and, you know, you're having to p physically place your hand on the throttle think, and things like that. Also, what, because, you know, when you crash mm. and you hurt, but I didn't hurt apart from that one spot. Right. Okay. Yeah. Nothing else hurt. You know, when you crash and you bang your head mm. and then you come around the next day, you're bang on my knee hurts yeah. or... Yeah. Or maybe, uh, nothing hurt. Mm. I got hit. I was still holding on to the handlebars, and the front wheel hit me there. Yeah. But I didn't get hit anywhere else. Yeah. So it, kind of down, it just went over my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously that, that that's obviously where the point of impact was, which is all yeah. the damage. But then you pay, maybe you didn't, you didn't feel nothing because the nerves and muscles and everything were numbed, maybe. Yeah, but once the pain happened, it was all pain in one spot. Yeah. It was horrible. It was I horrible. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably, the, probably the most awkward crash ever, you know, and things the, like that. I was probably, probably only going 20 mile an hour when I came off. Yeah. Yeah. If I'd, gone in, if I'd gone in at 25, I'd have got around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of, the th one of the first things you learn in Speedway, don't shut off around the yeah. first corner. <laughs> yeah. But... But like you say, a wet grass track, and you clearly felt like you had to do the meeting for the fans. So you basically yeah, put, the fa put, put the fans first. Charity meeting. I was the biggest name in the meeting. Um, and, you know, I said to them, right, I'll just do, just do this. Yeah, you know, I always moaned after practice at grass track. Always. <laughs> you know, track was you always did. It was just me. But <laughs> once I started to do it after every race. Yeah. Yeah, but... Um, I just wish I pulled out. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, out. yeah. But then, but then again, that 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 the, sh like the shows the sort of rider you are. You know, putting basically other people first, and then putting yourself after that. Then you know, but uh, say after after that, you, obviously you didn't ride the uh, 2016 in in the speedway season. I don't think. Um, and then you um, rode uh, was it for for Berwick in 2017? Um, and I think. No, no, 2017. Yeah, sorry, the two years didn't for Barrett. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the two yeah. years for Barrett. Yeah. yeah, 2017 was basically the, the, the comeback kind of kind of year, really. So, but uh, did you have to sort of persuade yourself to come back and ride, or was it a case of Barrett needed you? You wanted to ride? No, no, I never missed it. Never no. missed it. Oh, I kind of when I when I when I stopped, I I switched off, but we didn't go and watch anything. Oh, I was okay. helping help the ACU out a little bit with the kids. 
and um, and then the ACU we were kind of get I was like getting to be on the track racing committee and they said well we need to go to the European grass track final and help out there yeah so it was in Swingfield in you know the ground one of grounds meeting so I went down there and I was helping out the riders helping out Andrew mainly and we went out to the start line to pick the gate he wanted to go and look and I walked out and I stood on the start line and I went wish I was here <laughs> yeah and it was like that and uh, I was talking to one of the Dutch riders and, I, and he went, oh, you should be in this meeting. You could have won it. I was like, ah, now nah, I'm too old. And he went, look at Bert Dino, you know, he's, he's 10 years older than God and he's still riding. Yeah. Yeah, all right. And I went away and I thought, I'll just do some grass track, you know. Mm. Yeah, well, I've still got, I had one grass bike left. Just do one a month and this, that and the other. But then that got out. And suddenly, within a week, I'd got German clubs ringing me back up and French clubs. And, <laughs> and, I, and all winter, I was literally just doing grass track. And uh, it came to January, February time. I thought, I've got all these continental grass track meetings booked. I haven't ridden a bike. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Gunthorpe. And I, thought, I had a spirit bike as well. I went to Scunthorpe. I just thought I'd see if I could still ride a bike. And I was riding it. I went out and people pushed off and <laughs> riding around. I'd done about two laps just plodding. I thought, I can't, David. If you don't do it now, you're not going to. So I came yeah. down the back of the day and I thought, right. And I just pinned it full gas and I thought, oh, the muscle memory is going to kick in or I'm in big trouble. <laughs> then I did like four laps and I came in. And I was. Then I play and my wife come up to me and I'm going to swear now. She went, you bastard. And I went, what? And she went, you're going to race Speedway again. No, 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 no. And um, I did a couple of Speedway meetings, that are like the Ben Fund. And yeah. It's just a, just a ride, really. And went off doing the grass track. And then in about May time, as I've... As I've said many times, and I think I'm right, Scott and Jamie got that drunk after a meeting at Scunthorpe that they thought it'd be a good idea to sign me. <laughs> and, and it just turned out to be what I needed. Yeah. I, I managed to end my career on my terms. My riding was never, nowhere near where it was, mm. but that didn't bother me. I was I loved helping out the riders, you know, the like Jai and and all these guys. And I just and I said, if I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna enjoy it. And I'm gonna enjoy every single moment. Yeah. And I did. And I wish I'd enjoyed fifty percent of my other my first career like I did hundred percent of the second. Because mm. I and I had the best time <laughs> in the world. Yeah, because I imagine that it's like a second lease of life. It's going back to again those early days, you know, just thoroughly enjoying it and riding and riding and riding and things like that. And I mean, even in those last two years, you managed to still hold your own in in the league. I mean, I think you must have been a good solid set of second string, if not come heat leader at Berwick. Well, I spent me, I think I had about two weeks at number three or something, and then I then spent the rest of the first year at number five. Oh right, okay, yeah. Uh, the, the next year, I think I was at number three. I was partnered with Jai. So it was kind of a bit more settled. and uh, But again, I wasn't really... I struggled more in the last year because I lost my dad in the, in the January of that year. Yeah. And it, my dad had been with me throughout my whole career. And I, 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 I carried on, but it wasn't the same. Mm. But um, I wasn't bothered about how I scored. Yeah, if I scored six or seven points, but Berwick won, I was over the moon. I was more looking forward to... Been in the changing rooms before the <laughs> guys or the track walk, or you know, it, it was just it was just just great fun, you know. And uh, um, I was Beric put me in a very privileged position. I mean, they didn't know what was going. I was I was talking about retiring, um, but like all the other guys just said because I was old and you know, <laughs> like guy and people like that and Danny, I, you know, I would be an old guy, mm. and. Um, Nikolai had spoken to me a few times. So I'd helped him out a little bit at Leicester and stuff. And um, the opportunity came. I decided, I'm going to go for this with Nikolai. Mm. So I managed to... I, re I was going to retire on 
if I won the board Naples, which was my last, <laughs> I was going to. I was going to do a full Bruce Pennell or as higher on the podium. <laughs> Kyle Howe stole it from me and passed me on the last bend. So he stole my Pennell moment. But oh, dear. Barrett gave me the opportunity, instead of retiring, I re, I, and when I packed up the fourth, ironically, was it Berwick? Oh, right, yeah. Pulled up after two laps on the centre screen with a dislocated shoulder, and I never rode again. Where this time I had fun and I managed to stand up in front of a group of people, fans, promoters, fellow riders who had no idea I was going to retire. And and I retired and the, it felt right. Mm. And I'll never ride again. I'll <laughs> never, never have that. I might have a, a, a ride. Yeah. I'll never race again. And I yeah. know that I retired on my terms and I'm... I'm privileged that Barrett gave me that chance. You retired at, at, at the point, like I say, your terms, you felt right, everything just slotted into place that, you know, apart from obviously Carl Howe stealing your glory for that. <laughs> my, my Bruce Pennell moment. And I did mention <laughs> to him at, at Bellevue the other week that uh, he didn't even remember. So he could have given me the uh, meeting. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it would be more memorable if you won the meeting than... No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, looking, I say, looking back at your, your 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 British clubs and everything, I mean, you've you've done so so well on a team front, really, um, both personally and with every and with all the clubs and everything. But um, let's move, let's switch gears a little bit and go on to sort of like mm-hmm. some of the individual things that you've managed to achieve during your career. I mean, I've got a list here, both speedway and grass track, so this could be interesting if you remember any of it. <laughs> but um, I mean, managing to win the uh, the British on twenty one in 2000 i mean again early part of your career i can imagine that was a nice sort of feather in your cap you know pipping steady to one at least one <laughs> but um yeah it was that uh was that, is that is there anything from that meeting sort of stick out uh, in your mind yeah it wasn't because lee richardson was the world champion at that time oh yeah he was wasn't he? yeah and he came there i, I met lee on a that night on a night where things didn't go 100% for him. He was struggling with his engines. I think he went there a little bit. I'm world champion. Yeah. I'm gonna... But I'd never seen Edinburgh before. I'd never, never been there. And um, I'd had a lot of issues with engines. I got bought three new engines from Klaus Lausch mm. and they're just too powerful. And um, I, I got an engine changed by a guy in, by a guy near Coventry. And uh, picked it up on the way to, to Edinburgh. Got to Ed- I think I got to Edinburgh at quarter to seven or seven o'clock. No engine in the bike. Didn't see the track. <laughs> Bought with the engine in. You know, dropped a point in my first ride. Took about five teeth off the back. <laughs> Won my next four rides. Beat Lee Richardson in the runoff. So it was like for me, an eighteen-year-old beat the world championship and world champion. And mm. Lee was a fantastic rider as well. Yeah, you know, he was not just your world in twenty-one. He was a pretty good rider. Yeah. So at the, with where I'd been, I'd started the season two thousand. I hadn't had the best start. The first year where I, I started at number two, mm. in the, and I was I was finding it difficult, you know. Uh, so to, to to win that at the time was a, a good tonic. Yeah, yeah, and like I say, a good, a good thing to look on. The it was the last one I ever won. Yeah, <laughs> Simon stole them off me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then again, what most of them held at Sheffield, so you know, I think well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> home track advantage a little bit, I think. But uh, in in two thousand, you managed to get into the world on twenty on twenty one final, um, oh. and, and and I looked and when I looked at it, I was doing the, the notes for you and everything. Uh, it said David David Howe last place, no points. He yeah. Finish off the three rides. I'm guessing I, that was a bad night then. I was, it was at Gorjov and the track was like a ploughed field. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, my first race, I was off gate four, I think. Mm. And I had Christoph Sigelski and <laughs> Yarek Hampel. Maybe even Alish or Lucas Drummer. It was a tough race. Mm. And I made the start. I was in front. Come round Ben four. Next minute, I'm on my ass. Just gone. <laughs> Just a, yeah. and I had a good crack on the head. I tried to ride again, but it just didn't, you know. And uh, that 
that was that was at the time was a really bitter pill to swallow. It took me. A, I think we, we me and my dad drove to Sweden to it was a last uh, league matches up there. We were going to pick the bikes when I didn't speak all the way to Sweden because uh -huh. I said and, and and my dad was really funny on that. If you had a bad meeting and, and you were, got the mards on, he hated it. But it was one of them where even dad didn't say anything. I think if if I'd have spoke, I'd have just cried. I was. <laughs> Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was a learning curve, you know, it's mm -hmm. something that you, you get on with, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you just, just name those three riders in that first race. I mean, bloody hell. You know, that, that's, that is some race there and then, really. But uh, obviously, the previous year, in 99, you made your World in 21 final debut when obviously when Lee won in, uh, in Voyens. So scoring six points, finishing 11th, that's not bad, I suppose, for, for your debut and your first sort of putting your toe into this sort of environment really yeah it was a <clears throat> it was all learning you know um and um i never apart from one year i never really had good finals i was like good mm. qualifying who did well in the qualifiers and then for some reason i let myself down in the finals and mm. voyings just didn't happen it wasn't a bad meeting wasn't a good meeting just was just a meeting where I picked up the odd point here and there, you know. Um, so, but uh, again, the qualifying rounds were up to it. I think I'd had a couple of podiums in the quarterfinals and the semifinals, then suddenly you get to the world final and just let yourself down. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Yeah. yeah, maybe if it was a bit of a series, then it might have suited you a bit better than maybe just the one-off. <laughs> yeah, possibly I used to let nerves get to me. So possibly, mm. I don't know, but you will never know that now. No, exactly. I mean, you can't turn the clock back. But um, again, again, looking at some of the, the things that you've managed to do well in, again, uh, the British Grass Track on 21 in 2001, you've managed to get second in that. So, Should have won that too. Oh, God, God. here we go. <laughs> I was leading, leading that onto the last lap and I threw a chain. Oh, no. No, so, sorry, I blew, blew an engine up. Blew an engine oh, up. Oh, okay. Collier Street, 2001. Yeah, and I was... Matt Reed passed me on the run to the line and I limped home. <laughs> yeah, they're sort of scooting it across the line a yeah. little bit, trying to get it through. But uh, there you go, still, it's a, it's a second, I suppose, isn't it? It's a second. Yeah. <laughs> you made the, po you made the podium. Matt Reed was British in the 21 final champion. Yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, it took, it took a breakdown from the past year. So, oh. in, yeah. <laughs> what it is. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, uh, again, sort of like 2002. Uh, this time third in the British 121 grass track. That's when the chain came off. That's when the chain came off. That was the year, right? Okay. <laughs> but then, I think that, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. And Road to Menace. good track as well. So, but uh, also you managed to finish third in the World 121 Speedway final in mm. 2002. That was in the Czech Republic, wasn't it? Land. Yeah. Um, a good night for yourself, then, I can imagine. You must have felt pretty good to finally get on the roster in an FIM meeting. Yes, possibly one of the ones when I look back now is slightly more disappointing because oh, I probably right. possibly should have won it. Okay. Uh, I think my first race I was off gate two, Kenneth Pierre off one. And I made a really good start. Thought, oh, I've done this. Mm. But I didn't. Finish cross him. <laughs> yeah. And Kenneth, you know, Kenneth's the kind of rider you give him a little bit. And, you know, he, he, he fair play, he beat me, but that was my, I made the mistake. Then I think I won the next two races. And then I had a back to back race. Yeah. Beat Kasperzak in my third race. And then I was meeting Lucas in the next race, where I come off gate four when I beat Kasperzak and went, Around the outside of me. It was a really strange track, kind of quite long, fairly tight, but really bumpy. Oh, right, yeah. And, uh, I, then in the next race, I was off gate one against Lucas. Didn't take, again, my mistake, <laughs> didn't take the track conditions into consideration. Made the start off one, thought, well, I've just won the last race in the dirt, slammed mm. it straight into the dirt that wasn't there anymore. Uh, right, okay. Lucas around the inside, parked me on the fence. Those two points, I only needed a, I think, a, a second place in the last heat to be guaranteed third place. Mm. Uh, but if 
I thought I'd use my brain a little bit more <laughs> the races I possibly could have won that. I'm not saying I would have. So my, I think my mistakes cost me. Yeah, just probably just, that sounds to me like it's a bit like a bit track reading sort of thing, which yeah. just just caught you out a little bit. But yeah. that's, I mean, that happens at any point in anyone's career. You misread but the track. It, 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 at the time, it was nice, you know, to be mm. suddenly on the podium. And, you know, and when you look that year, the riders who didn't qualify, Yarrick Campbell, I don't think, made the world final. You know, uh, it was it was a, a a whole host of riders who you associate now as Grand Prix riders who didn't even yeah. make it. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough time. Yeah, and, the, and you can hold your hands up and you say you made from ninety nine two thousand and three. You made that every year world final. So even that's a good achievement, you know, to say that you managed to make those finals. Really. Yeah, proud. Of, I'm proud of it. You know, mm. so it was a uh, again the other twenty one. It was it was it was such a learning curve and such a it was a great experience because yeah. you know suddenly you go from being fifteen just right into suddenly training to be a professional i think that training is now faster yeah than when we were you know i remember when i was 16 my first year we went to Stroudston for the quarterfinal mm. we went me dad nigel sadler and his mechanic we come out of uh calais didn't even have a map <laughs> you know, we didn't know where we were going we didn't you know obviously the sat navs were mm. you know um, didn't know where we were going, didn't know nothing, you know, so it was such, such a learning curve, fast learning curve as well, but but fantastic. Yeah, and um, I can imagine the road trips were legendary in themselves, <laughs> <laughs> especially with someone like Nigel Sadler on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, again, just, just again scrolling through the, your um, more of your your highlights and things like that, you managed to get into like the the world long track. You managed to to qualify for that. Um, I was in 2011, coming second in the in the challenge to get yourself in for 2012. Um, so was that uh, again a new ambition for yourself then to sort of like establish yourself at long track level then? It was in a way. Um, I had a, I'd had a dabble at it in the past and stuff like that and. Uh, I thought this could my speedway I realized the speedway wasn't gonna you know wasn't gonna happen. I thought I can have a second crack and learn from my mistakes. And um yeah, I had reasonable success on the long track. Unfortunately, the year I got into the Grand Prix was the year I got injured. <laughs> yeah. Didn't affect me so much on a long track bike, my shoulder, than it did on a speedway bike. Yeah. More, um but um you know, the first year, yeah, I missed too many rounds and I got a wild card in the next year, but I can't remember what happened in the, in 2013, but just never, never, once I got in the Grand Prix, it, it never happened. Yeah, you know, I had some, I had some good European you know, rounds and uh, finals and whatnot, but um, just, but then again, when you go to, anyway, I remember going to Germany and going to Muldorf and seeing Eric Riss and you're like, oh, I can't. <laughs> are you just you know it's not good no matter how fast i am on the seven eight hundred meter tracks that guy is just stupid yeah i mean I I, i've seen the I've seen photos of him ride <laughs> yeah i've seen photos of him ride and everything is it's absolutely wild but you know but uh, it, it, his, his dad was fast but he's just stupid yeah, <laughs> yeah you, need, like, you need a bit of like, I, just throw in the towel. I might as well just throw the towel in now you know <laughs> Everyone's everyone's racing for second place, sort of thing, rather than yeah, trying to win the championship. Just so fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's got his, he's obviously a fantastic rider, mm. but then he's got his dad's experience and knowledge. And you know, long track is a lot about the gearbox and the setup and all. Yeah, you know, as you'll know if you've helped James out, everything yeah. all comes together. Mm. Well, he's got Gerds that he two hundred. <laughs> Years worth of experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and then he can ride. I, mean, I was like, oh, what's the point? Yeah, never is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, never gonna happen. No, never gonna happen. But in 2013, you managed to finish third at uh, Marmond in, yes. in, the, in the long track. So, I mean, for those people who haven't seen Marmond, it's one of the weirdest tracks in the world. It's, it's a triangle, three corners, and it has a speedway track in the middle. You know, so I mean, what do you remember of that sort of meeting at Marmond? I remember it being really good fun. Mm. 
you know, uh, I'd ridden in Marmond in the early 2000s and got completely lost. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I wasn't particularly looking for, I don't think I was in the Grand Prix, 2013. Don't think I was in the Grand Prix that year. Uh, well, I've got, I've, on my night, you, you did you did it. You came fifteenth and done four rounds. Yeah, I didn't do all right. I, I went in because um, Happy Muston got injured. Oh right, okay, yeah. They didn't give me the wild card. They gave me the reserve, first reserve. That was it. Yeah. And um, I remember I was working actually. I was driving, and I got a phone call from the ACU. Do you want to go to Marmond at the weekend? This is on Thursday. I was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Off go. Uh, and. Uh, I liked it. But yeah, I was a bit concerned because mm. so the GPS let me down on the previous time and I didn't know. <laughs> uh, but it just, I remember I had bike trouble actually. I wasn't doing particularly well in the meeting. I had a bit of, bit of a, found some metal in the oil and I jumped on this, this spare bike mm. and that was brilliant. Suddenly I went and won, sneak, snuck into the semi final. Yeah. Won the semi final and uh, my wife always tells a story. She was coming down to the pits with me with my young daughter she was then looking for me and I think it was um, Benny Reed said oh, she went where's David and he went oh he's getting ready to go out for the final I was like well, he's done a rubbish meeting you know he's not done very so I had to snuck in and then I, I, you know, I, I had a good final and it, oh, my mom is like the Cardiff of you know long track yeah 30 40,000 people in quite a small arena mm. yeah, for what it, and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it was, uh, and yeah, it was good that Richard won the meeting as well that year, you know, Brit winning the Grand Prix. So yeah, it was a not good, good night. It was a good night for the Brits then all around, you know, yeah. th two on the podium, you know, can't really go much better. I was obviously getting another person on the Welsh Rabbit, one, two, three, but you know, yeah, I mean, James has told me stories about Marmonda, of how crazy it is and how the fans love it. And it's a party. Every meeting's like a party over there. So, but uh, yeah, and I mean, just again, just looking through and everything, he managed to win the, I was trying to win it. So he comes second in the world team long track as well in uh, 2012. Um, if I remember rightly looking at, it, at, the, at the score thing, you were at reserve um, for that one. I, I was, I was... Um, that's the meeting that finished my season. I oh, right, so. Older, and then I had six weeks off, and I wasn't in the team mm. um, because I was injured. Yeah. And I came back for the, there's a back to back Grand Prix Saturday to Saturday in Finland and Norway. And then the World Team Cup was the next weekend in, in uh, San Mikel. And uh, I wasn't in the team. Uh, which I was a bit annoyed about because I didn't find out I wasn't in the team until one of the fellow Grand Prix riders told me I wasn't in the team. Oh, okay. And um, then I got back from, from Norway and the, the ACU called me up and said, oh, Andrew's injured. Do you want to do, you wanna do the, the, the World Cup? I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do, I'll do it. And... Uh, Dad and uh, my mechanic and uh, my wife went out to San Mikel. I was riding the Scunth up on the Friday, and Dad called me up and said, "Look, this they've, they've built this track for you. This is <laughs> this is just this is you." You're, okay, I'll, yeah, well, I'll see you, see you tomorrow. So I flew in, and I looked at it. I was like, "Oh, that's nice. It's not <laughs> only about, only about 500 meters. One bend was a bit rough. One was, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a bit of me. That is." And um, I went, I was, again, I was reserved. I went out in practice and I think they timed us and I was one of the, the fastest out there. So uh, as the, the manager had explained, what he was going to do is whoever finished last of the, because you, you have three, three riders from each team. Yeah, yeah. Whoever finished last would be taken out and then the next rider, the reserve, would be put in. So we'd all get, so I was like, cool. I looked at the first race. It was against the Dutch. So you got Piper, De Jong, and I think Stinkmeyer. So mm -hmm. I was like, the next race is against the Finns. And Kilmacorpy wasn't there. And I was like, I'm quite happy to sit on the sideline for the first race, you know. <laughs> but then they go, oh, Dave, we're going to put you in the first race. I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. 
<laughs> yeah, luckily I, I managed to, to, to win that and then um, then I was in the next race and uh, uh, yeah, I think I went through, I think Rich Hall broke down in one race, but me and Rich went through the rest of the meeting either on a, both on paid maximums. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was the last heat against the Czechs, I think. And uh, the, the manager came and said, we need an England 1-2. Again, England 1-2, we've won the meeting. We've not won the final, obviously. We've won the yeah. meeting. And the Germans have always won the meeting, plus the final, because they're pretty Germans, aren't they? Um, <laughs> but at least we can... So it's like, no worries. I'll get, I got gate six, I think, which Sam McKay was like, guaranteed a heat win. But mm. don't worry. I'm your man. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Gone off gate six. Done three laps. Come round bends one and two. Come on the back straight. And there's this biggest bang you've ever heard. And the bike just straightened up. And I've looked down and my front wheel's hanging out. Oh, whoa. But in, what happened, the, the mechanic hadn't tightened the front spindle up and it half dropped out. Oh, front, no. But in my head, in my racing brain, I thought, I can get this home. <laughs> really? So I've just full on long track the bike and I've got round bend three and four and I'm turning the front wheels like flapping that way and <laughs> trying to understeer it. I've come across the finish line and then I've shut off. Why yeah. I didn't back, I'll never you know. But why didn't I stop it when I still had a front wheel in my bike? Yeah. But there was no spokes left. It was just the front wheel was just turning. Oh, wow. As soon as I shut off, it's just stopped. And I've like a hundred mile an hour, just mm. boom. The front wheel went into the crowd. Rich, <laughs> Richard all managed to get between me and the bike. And I tore my rotator cuff in my left shoulder. So now I've got a dodgy right one. Yeah. In the season. But I remember lying on the track. And I've gotten knocked down. I wasn't very good. And then Paul Cooper came up to me. And, you know, Paul Cooper's like, he's laughing. <laughs> Don't worry, Dave. We're going to go and win this for you. And I was like, oh, you better do it, mate. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know unfortunately, yeah, they only got silver that night. You know, maybe uh, if that hadn't have happened, we could have had gold. But uh, it did. And uh, yeah. but I've got a story to tell about how I can crash a bike, you know, front wheel in a <laughs> Yeah, so by, by, at the end of 20, 2012, you had two dodgy shoulders, and uh, yeah. <laughs> but you came away with a silver medal, so you can't really sort of grumble nah. that. No, but you know, it, yeah, like you said, if that incident didn't and, happen, and, and, and a love affair of San Mikel became somewhere I had a lot of success. Yeah, it was just like Dad said, it was made for me. They built that track with whenever they built it, they went, "What would David Howe like?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would build it around the rider. We don't care what anyone else wants. It. There's just one rider we want to see do well here. Yeah, that's it. But no, again, it, the stories are what make these sort of things come to life. And you know, hearing about that, I mean, I, I dread to think. Unfortunately, touch wood in my career, that never happened. The front wheel never fell out. So yeah, you know, going from a hundred mile an hour to zero as you go over the finish line, I can imagine was the scariest thing in the world. Well, yeah. luckily, I can't, I can't remember it. Oh, yeah, there, there was that plus side. <laughs> yeah. I can remember the front wheel coming loose. Mm. And I can remember going around the last bend. But that's it. Uh -huh. The next thing I remember is shouting at my wife, who was sitting on my gloves in the ambulance, and it really annoyed me. For some... <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling her that I don't want to... The, the doctor trying to send me to hospital, and I'm trying to tell her to say, tell the doctors my eyes always look like this. And why you're sitting on my gloves, you're going to put a crease in them. And... <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, though, when, you're, when you're not silly and you're on oxygen, you say the weirdest things in the world. So, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, the day then again, 2014, you got you took part again in the world team long track. Unfortunately, the boys came only fifth that year. Um, yeah. And again, I think if I remember right, looking at the scores, were you reserve again for that one, or were you actually in the team that time? No, they decided to Mitch decided to put me at reserve, mm. um, which I told him wasn't a good idea because I, I don't do well. I never. That's why I hated number five. Yeah, I always wanted to be one or two because I always I hated hanging around. I needed to mm. get out, and I don't think I went out on track to like heat ten or something and. 
think I had a, I think I had a bad first ride, but then I did all right in the rest of the meeting. But um, I was it, that, that's how the GB team worked. Though when you say you were reserve, it was you. It was I can't remember how many riders are in a team, three or four. But if there was four riders plus a reserve, it wasn't. It was a five five rider team, but they couldn't fit five riders in the program. Yeah. So they reserve. Um, and how it always worked is whoever was, we riders talked as well. You know, I remember, remember that first year in San Mikel, I was doing okay. And I went, look, I'm quite happy to sit a race out. And, you know, that's how the GB team worked. And it was, it was good. I felt, yeah. uh, we, we, and it, it didn't make any, there was no animosity with the guys. We just, we just there, you know, riding, riding the bikes. It was, it was good fun. Yeah, it's something again that you can enjoy. You know, look back and say, again, I did it. You know, and uh... never got a gold medal. And what really annoys me, James <laughs> didn't even ride in Mundo. <laughs> buggered my shoulders up. For... <laughs> yeah, you, but you, you actually rode and got injured for a silver, and then yeah, and then James didn't. James didn't get it because he, he was only a, a non-riding reserve. But you know, it's but then again, got a gold medal. <laughs> ah, you said. European gold medals as well. <laughs> yes, yes, there is that as well. But it, uh, still, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm unfortunately, it's the injury that, that that caused the problem. I think in, in your career towards the end, anyway. But you know, again, you know, looking back, let's say looking back at it, you know, you've, you've done a hell of a lot in your career. I mean, also riding in Sweden and Poland. You know, I can imagine even riding just in the leagues, they were quite an experience as well. I loved Sweden. Mm-hmm. Really, I, I, I loved it. You know, I started Sweden. I was lucky that Jan Andersen. Uh, got me a team place in in, uh, in Linköping in 2000, yeah. and uh, I loved it there. Absolutely, yeah. I just loved the country. I loved the people. It was uh, back then as well. The speed. Well, I remember me like, right? Are we ready to go race? Two minutes. They were like, no, just have a coffee. It's cool. You know, it'll be fine. Yeah. Dead, relaxed, and, and I couldn't get my head around it at the time. But I loved it, and I, I think I spent I think I spent about ten years racing in Sweden. Mm. Poland, I never really got to grips with. I couldn't, my, I, I, I never leave, I, my mistrust of people back then wouldn't leave bikes out there, so it meant I had to drive out there. And, um, and it was, it, yeah, I never really got a, I never really settled. I had a couple yeah. of good years in mm. uh, enjoyed it there. But um, Poland then, Poland now was slightly different as well. And, uh, yeah, it was. I never really, never really enjoyed Poland. Just to, didn't enjoy the pressure that mm-hmm. they, they, yeah, they put on you. I remember, I, I, like one team. I, I remember one team. I, uh, I rode for for Wood. No, sorry, for Ravage at Wood. Mm. Got a maximum. Then they told me after the meeting that they couldn't afford me. So I didn't race for like. An, I think it broke my ankle, and I didn't. And they, they wanted me out there my first race after a broken ankle. Scored six points, and they told me it wasn't enough. It's like, well, what, 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 what do you want to do? Fifteen's uh, too many. Six isn't enough. Yeah. So I didn't like that kind of, you know, where you you have to practice, and there'll, there's a bloke with a 1930s stopwatch, and he's like, no, you've got to go out and go faster. I was like, you, yeah, you, yeah. You tell me that. Yeah, that, that's. To, the, I remember I was at Tarnov and I'd done you over two laps, and I think Yanis Kolodzhe had done seventeen point six or something on his antiquated you know, <laughs> yeah. sundial, and I had to go until I beat it. Well, you know, I could. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy I just, to hear I that. Could, and I just couldn't get my head around it. I never enjoyed it. No, yeah. I, I, get, I get the impression from that that the, the poles just want you to go fast. They don't really sort of care. You've got, you've got to sort of beat your teammate a little bit yeah. you know, to, oh, to be the best. I remember the first year I did in Tarnov, I was with me and Sergi Darkin with the foreign riders. And Sergi, what a, what a lovely bloke, Sergi. Mm. And we had to do a, a, a race against their juniors. Sergi got carted off to hospital, you know. They're just, these, oh. these junior riders just drilled him. But then he's in the team because Sergi's now gone, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. That's not. Uh, no, no yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Speedway's looking about, about looking after your teammate, not yeah, trying to drill your teammate, sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, looking, looking, looking back to then as well. Back then as well, the um, the money that we earn in compared to the polls was. Yeah. Remember my first meeting in Tarno, I got paid. I got paid in cash. And anyway, I wasn't a huge amount of money, mm. you know. Thinking, of, yeah, it's enough to put me in pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't, we're not talking about secret briefcases. <laughs> Sticking in pocket anyway. And we've gone to a, a a bar or a nightclub or something. And I've just pulled out this money to this role, and I've paid. Next minute, people, all the club are like, just, I'm like, well, <laughs> it's all right. How much have you got? And I went like, that would take a doctor a year to earn in Poland. Oh, that's scary, that is. Yeah. Scary money. That's, you know, and that's why those junior riders, they just wanted to be in the team because mm -hmm. you wouldn't have got that money, but it was better than going and doing whatever their jobs were. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 could, they could probably make a decent living just being a spirit rider <laughs> rather than, like say, being a doctor. So, so Fergie Darkey wasn't standing in his way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they saw an opportunity, shall we say? Yeah. You know, that's what they saw. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, touching on a bit on your Swedish career before we wrap this up is that uh, yeah, like you said, you had uh, from two thousand, you rode for Link Tropen, and then you rode uh, two thousand one, two thousand two, and two thousand seven for Orana, or was that how you say it? Orana, something like that. Uh, uh, no, no. That's the one I meant. That one, <laughs> Mario started, and then uh, obviously then um, Alfredo Stuna, weren't you for yeah. a few years as well? So I mean. Was that the time like, in Eskil Stone was when uh, Billy and Carl Stone who were riding out there and things like that, was it? Uh, Billy, Carl Stone, and Nicky Pedersen. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. You know, where we should have won the league that year. But um, I remember one meeting, I think it was the highest ever Swedish league league crowd against mm. Arvis. Yeah, so. Oh, uh, yeah. Only, haven't you? Yeah. But, uh, just, uh, it was uh, Eskil Stone. I think it was about. 11,000 people when you got to remember there's only about 15,000 people leaving the whole of Sweden <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, thousand of them were in Eskil <laughs> yeah oh it was, it was fantastic and uh, to race Tony in Sweden as well mm. yeah and obviously that was the time when Masana were the dominant force at that time was yeah. it Tony Tony Lee uh Javi um, people like that with the team so you know I mean they were going to draw a big crowd and I'm, I mean I never I never saw a meeting at Eskil Stuna live I've only been there to practice and help out some Swedish kids and the track looks fantastic to ride and fun to ride yeah but it was Nicky was with us so it was like Eskil Stuna <laughs> with, with with about a foot of dirt ah I see yeah Nicky would be sitting on the grey like rip it out rip it out <laughs> Oh, my arms aren't strong enough for this. But the shape of the track, you could get away with it. And, mm. you know, Nicky, with that, you know, that year was world champion, 2003, yeah. and he was just brutal. You know, nothing, <laughs> it wasn't grippy enough for Nicky, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> it probably would never, ever be, no one's going to be grippy enough for Nicky, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I've seen him hang off the fence at Eastbourne you know yeah. and, and, and things like that so yeah I, I completely understand what you mean but uh yeah anyway then we've, we've got to wrap this up because i think we could talk forever about everything <laughs> and anything <laughs> you know but uh, yes. much appreciate mate i mean the stories again brilliant you know without asking these sort of things and talking about these sort of things myself and anyone else who watches or listens to this is never going to hear them again sort of thing but uh, more importantly it's good to hear that you're obviously in good health minus the dodgy arm you know, yeah. obviously, you know, but uh, no, mate, I must much appreciate it. Um, I must say to everyone who's been, who's watched it and watched all the other episodes, thank you for the support and everything so far. I mean, uh, like the page, join the group, uh, follow us on Spotify and YouTube. Um, hopefully this will be up um, tomorrow and everything. So, but please go and follow it. And uh, to the next time. Thank you, David. Yes. <laughs>